Professor Abdus Salam have to do with the making of Pakistan's atomic bomb? There are lots of different notions about this, and it seems as if people believe in what they want to believe in. So on the one side, you have those who say that the very idea came from Salam, that he was crucial to it, that we wouldn't have had the bomb without him. And then there are those who say he had absolutely nothing to do with it, he was insufficiently patriotic. And then there are those among the right-wing Islamist parties of Pakistan who accuse him of sabotaging the effort. There's a third opinion that Salam was a man of peace and therefore could not have worked on the bomb as a matter of principle and therefore did not have anything to do with it. So you see, it's awfully confusing. How do you get to the truth? That can only be done by systematically looking at facts. In 1963, Salam made his first comment about nuclear weapons. He was reviewing a book for new scientists. It was called The Spread of Nuclear Weapons, authored by Leonard Beaton and John Maddox. In this review, Salam approvingly quotes what the authors have written. The Indian program has an inescapable shape. It suggests clearly that the Indian government has consciously and intentionally equipped itself with an option to decide to build nuclear weapons, with undoubtedly the possibility, assuming continued Canadian abstinence, of being the fifth power to explode a nuclear device. Now, Salam also says that the spread of nuclear weapons is inevitable. By 1963, Salam was already a celebrity in the world of physics, and he was the youngest fellow of the Royal Society. His talents were noted by President Ayub Khan, who appointed him as his scientific advisor. Salam recommended to Ayub Khan that Pakistan set up the Atomic Energy Commission and he further suggested that Pakistan acquire a reactor from Canada similar to that that the Indians had obtained. This could be useful both for generating power as well as for other things. One of Salam's role models was Dr. Homi Bhabha. Baba was a brilliant Cambridge-educated physicist who later on became the central figure for India's bomb program. Salam knew many of the great physicists of his times, including J. Robert Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer was the man who headed the Manhattan Project that led to the creation of America's first atomic bomb. But Oppenheimer refused to work on the hydrogen bomb, which was immensely more destructive. The story of Pakistan's quest for the atomic bomb begins just six weeks after the West Pakistani army surrendered to the Indian army in Dhaka on the 16th of December 1971. It was a moment of tremendous humiliation for Pakistan, and on the 24th of January 1972, President Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto summoned all the relevant scientists in Pakistan with a special invitation to Abdus Salam to be present at a meeting in Multan where he demanded of them, you must make the bomb. Present were Professor Abdus Salam, later to win a Nobel Prize, Ishrat Usmani, head of the Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission, and Munya Khan, who was to succeed him. The date, 1972. It was rather, you know, like a, like a jamboree, you know. It was very, there was a great deal of enthusiasm and joy. And these were, you know, the early days. And, you know, uh, you know, Bhutto could have, uh, he Bhutto had said that uh, anything, you know, he could have got away with anything, you know. I mean, uh, his authority was unquestioned. And loyalty to Bhutto was unquestioned, and he was he looked upon as a as the great messiah. So he got all these boys together, and there were senior people, very senior people, and junior people, youngsters. And he said, "Look, you know, we're going to have a bomb. We're like we're going to have a party." 
And he said, uh, can you give it to me? So, you know, they started shouting like school children, you know. They said, oh, yes, 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 you can have it, you can have it, you can have it. The enthusiasm for the bomb was clearly very much there. But where would the material that goes into the core of the bomb come from? The fissile material. And here is where Abdul Salam's advice to Ayub Khan had paid off. The Canadians had delivered their nuclear reactor. And just 10 months after the Multan meeting, President Bhutto inaugurated the Karachi nuclear power plant. جناب بھٹو نے فرانس سے ایٹمی ری پروسیسنگ پلانٹ خریدنے کا معاہدہ کیا امریکہ نے پاکستان کے پور امن ایٹمی پروگرام کو ختم کرنے کے لیے شدید دباؤ ڈالا پاکستان نے بین الاقوامی سامانتیں مہیا کرنے پر آماد کی ظاہر کی بعد میں فرانس نے اپنی شرائط کی خلاف ورزی کا بہانہ بنا کر ری پروسیسنگ پلانٹ کا معاہدہ منسوخ کر دیا لیکن جناب بھٹو اپنی آخری سانسوں تک اپنے اس موقف پر ڈٹے رہے Somewhere in 1972, Abdus Salam summoned Riyazuddin from Islamabad and told him to come to the International Center for Theoretical Physics in Trieste, where Salam was director. Riyazuddin had been Salam's student and at Imperial College London he had done a very good thesis in elementary particle physics. He was a good physicist and Salam tasked him with developing the theoretical basis for Pakistan's bomb. So now, Riyazuddin would have to develop a theoretical physics group that would look into the various aspects of physics related to a bomb explosion. Although Pakistan was forced into abandoning the plutonium route, it did succeed by another way, and Riyazuddin was decorated with a high national honor for having laid the theoretical foundations of the bomb. In his unpublished memoirs, the late Professor Riyazuddin recalls that sometime in December 1973, he had accompanied Salam and Munir Ahmad Khan to the Wah Explosive Factory and met with the head Lieutenant General Kamar Ali Mirza. He says, that's where I saw TNT for the first time and an explosive called Composition B, which is needed for the making of nuclear weapons for the implosion mechanism. India's test in 1974 was to hugely accelerate the Pakistani search for the bomb. Salam is not known to have done any bomb calculations himself. And there's a clear reason for that, because the making of a bomb, the physics of it, has become simpler and simpler with the passage of time. So although it does need a good theoretical physicist to head the project, yet it would have been a waste of time for a man with such talent as Salam to have engaged in simple or relatively simple calculations. But then the question is, why did Salam want the bomb in the first place? There's no clear answer to that. But let's remember that 1947 was a time of tremendous carnage where Muslims killed Hindus and Hindus killed Muslims and more than a million people died in the tragic events of partition. But with the passage of years, Salam's position on nuclear weapons changed and it changed dramatically. In 1981, he expressed the view that Wanting nuclear weapons is an act of madness. So what changed Salam? I think there were two reasons. The first is easy to understand. In 1974, the Ahmadis, Salam's religious community, were declared non-Muslims, heretics, by an act of the Pakistani parliament and subsequently became the most persecuted religious community in Pakistan. So clearly, Salam must have lost enthusiasm just on account of this. But I don't think that that was the only reason or even the main reason. Salam lived in a milieu of international scientists, people who came from every part of the world, had different religions, had different nationalities, and thought differently. Among his collaborators was Jogesh Pati, a Hindu of 
Indian descent. With Pati, he wrote some pioneering papers, including one that inspired a massive search for decay of the proton. As the founder director of the International Center for Theoretical Physics, an institution dedicated to spreading science across the world, particularly in developing countries, Salam found himself advocating disarmament, world peace, and turning swords into plowshares. He lectured politicians on this. Do you have any message for the politicians? Well, politicians, uh, well, first of all, they should get rid of nuclear weapons, I think. That's the only message which one could make for the politicians. To conclude, the young Salam and the older Salam were really two very different people. The younger one was still dealing with the bitterness of the past and therefore sought nuclear weapons. But the older one had transcended that and had come to realize the commonality of all peoples on this planet. One so wishes that all scientists, in fact all people, realize this sooner rather than later.